At this point now we've run the linear regression script um, and we're sitting in AFNI data 6 slash AFNI. Let's just verify what the outputs of that script are. So uh, I'm going to cat our all regress. Just dump the little uh, script to the command line and again it's exactly what we see in the handout. Um, the outputs from this we're requesting like uh, the T statistics output but those will come in the bucket data set so the the files output from here the are all funk that contains the uh, beta weights and other statistics T and F stats um, we have the X matrix stored in are all uh, X X mat dot 1d and a JPEG version of that here and then a fit time series that's the uh, that's that's 3d Dick and evolves main job is fitting the model to the input data and the resulting fit which is a sum of uh, regressors times beta weights at each voxel is the fit time series so if we look at the uh, files I'll put in I should show that command I did a uh, uh, an LS and long format sorting by time in reverse order putting the new files at the bottom of the screen so we see um, we see any warning messages output by 3 d involve I'll just cat that file uh, for kicks it whines at us about using polar one uh, this is kind of a practice version just to keep a simpler model uh, the, the start to finish course will use the actual recommended polar of three but uh, we're just keeping things simple here there's the JPEG and the regular version of the X matrix so if we uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute let's just finish up with the handout and we'll we'll get that closed um, but I'll just notice note the output files here. So again, here are the statistics and then the fit time series data set the head and brick file so um, In the slides uh, we have our 3d deconvolve command that we've walked through um, We mentioned running 3d remo fit to model model serial core uh, autocorrelation in the, in the noise um, That's an that's a separate option you can consider you can ask Gaffney proc to do that you can have ask Gaffney proc to produce the remo output instead of the 3d deconvolve output um, but I'm not going to focus on the differences right now uh, our main goal is to understand the regression model um, and here's our uh, regression matrix we've uh, we've looked at that already we've you can plot it using 1d plot dash separate scaling on the file are regressors of interest so we'll, we'll look at these things uh, a little bit more just to focus on them um, the the options for the command we've gone through and then just looking at the output so I'm going to close the handout now and let's actually uh, just start looking at things a little more closely so the X matrix again is in our all underscore X dot X mat at 1d that's what we told 3 d Deconvolve to call it. So if we do 1D plot dash separate uh, scaling, S E P S C L, on the R all underscore X dot X mat tab file, uh, I should have put that in the background, but too late. I can, I'll fix that in a moment if I want to. So here's our. Uh, here's our regression matrix and just to, to recap again we have three runs here and we used uh, for example the, the polar term I'll put the command back up here so I'll do control Z and BG and it'll whine at me I should have done the ampersand in the first place if I cat our, uh, our all regress so our, our full model again is polar one which is a linear trend modeling per run so you see with the three runs here we have run one two and three from left to right and at the bottom of the X matrix from the, it goes from the bottom up we have our run one constant and linear drift turns run two constant linear drift run three constant linear drift and uh, then we have the regressors of interest our two regressors of interest 
and just to focus on those a little bit um, let's plot those on their own so we can do 1d plot uh, uh, the same 1d plot command the separate scaling option is irrelevant now because we're going to focus on those but notice the regressor indices here go 0 1 2 3 4 5 for the first six regressors and then 6 and 7 are the regressors of interest and 8 9 10 11 12 13 are the motion terms so if we want to focus on um, our two regressors of interest we can specify those uh, using square brackets 6 and 7 and the surrounding quotes to hide that from the shell so if we plot that now we've got our two regressors of interest and these these are of course very important because you know these are what we plan to write our paper on this is how we're modeling our main task uh, responses and you know hopefully they it matches reality so uh, you, you notice these indices from 0 up to 450 here are TR indices they're not in seconds um, 1d plot we didn't tell it that uh, there's a time index of two seconds here it's just counting uh, data points so uh, we see that the visual stimuli didn't happen until uh, most uh, it didn't even start until 30 indices which is to say one minute into the first run but we had two visual responses there and you notice the length of these how long is that since this is two seconds well we, we, we don't have to estimate it but our events last 20 seconds so again 3d convolve will uh, model this by convolving a 20 second box car with a 15 second BLOCK uh, block basis function that's the in, uh, instantaneous response function and the result is a 35 approximately a 35 second response curve so each one of these bumps here is about 35 seconds on its own for it to return to zero but you see most of them don't return to zero because there's a little overlap when the next one starts the the return time is going to be you know a 15 second return but there's because that's the uh, that's the duration of just the basis function but there's only a 10 second ISI so it doesn't quite return to zero here but those are the two regressors of interest and this looks this looks good and then we have our six motion parameters again uh, in the 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 grown-up version that we do in the start to finish class we actually won't just use six motion parameters we'll use six per run so this set of six um, in run one will 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 be as it is but then there will be zero after that and then we'll have another set of six at a zero but non-zero in run two and then a last set of six that's just for run three uh, but again that's that's in the more uh, uh, more complete version of this analysis so so now we've now we've uh, covered all the contents of the X matrix I, I go over it in fair detail here because this is essential to understand this is our decision on as to how to model the data if we do a poor job here everything uh, will suffer from it so you certainly want to understand this so now let's uh, let's open up AFNI if you don't already have it running I don't so I'll start it again you may already have AFNI running and uh, I'll just temporarily close these windows and we'll we'll open up the same uh, images that we were looking at before so we'll set the underlay initially to EPI run one though we'll promptly change that and I'll open up an axial uh, I'm going to close these the plot with the regressors of interest we can keep this one up here this might be nice to uh, reference once in a while and then we'll open up a graph window and we'll go to our favorite uh, voxel um, I've restarted AFNI so I have to jump to IJK again I'm going to jump to IJK and enter our uh, indices of interest 26724 if I recall correctly 
and uh, and there we go I'll make that a touch wider so so now let's now let's focus on the real input here so this is just run one in this case now if you recall from uh, if we cat the processing script the input was actually all r all underscore vr and just to do verify what's in that data set if we run 3d info on r all underscore vr plus a ridge we can see here's the command uh, we can see the general header information it is uh, uh, the, the grid is the, it's the same grid across all runs so um, we've got 80 by 80 by 33 slices um, in each volume a single image is 80 by 80 voxels and this shows us uh, we have a time step a TR of two seconds here 450 time points in this data set we don't actually know that it had three runs um, that's why, again, in our 3D Deacon Evolve command, we had to tell it where the run breaks are. But when we typically run this, say, through AFNIPROC or something, we'll give it three separate data sets, um, and then it won't, it will know where the run breaks are from that. Um, we can see how this was created. It doesn't quite fit. I'm going to shrink my font down a little bit just so we can put the whole command on the command line so this data set was created in initially this was run through AFNIPROC but we had just the TCAT output where we we removed the first two time points from each run so that left us with 150 time points in runs 1 2 and 3 giving us 450 time points altogether so that's the 3D TCAT command. And then the only other pre-processing step we ran on this was 3D Valbreg, aligning everything to time index number 2, so not 0 or 1, but 2. Uh, the output data set was called R all, so all runs underscore VR for volume registered. We saved the motion parameters uh, in motion.1D. We were chatty about uh, output text output to the screen and the input was uh, r all plus a ridge that was that's the previous prefix was r all and uh, the view was attached to that plus a ridge so the only thing that's been done to this data set is removing two time points per run and then running 3d vol break so uh, the scaling for example hasn't been done no blurring um, you know no T shift just this okay so that's where we're starting from now in in the AFNI controller I'll raise my controller window just to remind you um, if you lose it you can right click on any of these disp buttons right click not left and that will raise the AFNI controller that corresponds with it so now let's set our underlay data set to be that are all plus a ridge. I should mention that uh, again if you want this is showing information about three time points 0 1 and 2 but if you want all of them you can add uh, either the lowercase or the uppercase verb option just to just for kicks if I added if I add this say uppercase verb option how do you spell oh my goodness how do you spell verb and I'll put that through last just for kicks uh, the uppercase verb gives the slice timing and stuff too. I don't know why that needs a whole new other, another option. Maybe we'll change that. But anyway, I can scroll down and it uh, and it shows all all 450 time points now. And without less, just to leave it on the screen. So let's go back to AFNI now, and let's set our underlay to be that data set. So underlay equals r all underscore vr and you can see immediately the graph window gets more uh, um, filled up so we've got three runs here instead of one uh, you know early on we had done the fim uh, pick ideal we had picked the uh, run one ideal uh, that no longer fills the uh, the graph window 
since that was just the first of three runs it's only it's clearly only covering that but uh, I'll drop my matrix size down again with the lowercase m button in the matrix window uh, you can see there's if again there's beautiful correspondence from this but our regressor uh, our pretend regressor of interest up there doesn't quite match so just to see how to clear that if you wanted to clear that we can come down into the FIM menu here edit ideal and we're off the screen I'm going to drag it over FIM edit ideal and we can clear it in the, kind of in the middle ish here clear ideal fantastic so here's say our voxel of interest which shows a nice response and uh, we've we've looked at what the uh, the input data set uh, describes so now let's start looking at some of the output from the linear regression model uh, I think I'll break this into two steps right now just so uh, it's easier for viewing perhaps so we'll start we'll start up a new video for that